This screencast accompanies my lecture on the seasons. This specifically has to do with the motions of the sun simulator that I do employ in lecture. I provided for you a link on how you can download the simulator itself. The simulator itself is part of a series of labs offered by the University of Nebraska Astronomy Department. I provide for you a link to download it here in the description of this video. Okay, once you have downloaded the labs themselves, NAAP Labs as it's called, you'll then go ahead and click on that. That then calls up the following menu, and then you specifically want to take a look at number four, Motions of the Sun. Click on that. Okay, then on this page here, you want to access the simulator itself as the last link here on the page. Let me go ahead and click on that. And that then calls up the following. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove some of the detail here that is unnecessary for our purposes. Over here in the lower right-hand corner where it says General Settings, let me go ahead and unclick the ecliptic. Let me also unclick showing the underside of the celestial sphere, and that then gives us the following. Okay, let me rotate it like this, such that the orientation is very similar to what I draw on the board in lecture. And then the various controls that are important here for the motions of the Sun Simulator are over here on the upper right-hand side. First of all, right here is a clock that shows the time of day over 24 hours. Right over here is a Mercator projection map with a uh, horizontal bar here. This bar can be then used to adjust the latitude. And then up here are the calendar months and the days of the year. Okay, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to adjust this for specifically one of the situations that we look at in lecture. I'm going to go ahead and move this bar here for the latitude to 90 degrees north, which represents the North Pole, like so. Okay, let me also change the date here as well. One of the important days when describing the seasons is June 21st, which is the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm going to go ahead and change the date here to that date, like so. Okay, and then if we go over here to the simulator itself, you can see the little stick figure here, and then all directions are south like so when you stand here at the North Pole. Right here, this blue stick represents the direction towards the North Celestial Pole, and then therefore, if you're standing at the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole is straight up at the zenith. Okay, let me go ahead and highlight the horizon like so, and when I do, you'll notice that the celestial equator here coincides with the horizon when you stand at the North Pole. And then this here in yellow is the sun's declination, its daily path that's also known as the sun's diurnal circle. And then what I'm going to do over here is start the animation and let 24 hours go by. When I do, you'll see that the sun here circulates parallel to the horizon, parallel to the celestial equator, like so. So the sun does not rise or set on that day. Okay, now when I stop it here, let me go ahead and make it 24 hours. There we go, like so. When I stop it here, the sun is actually a little bit further to the south than it was on the previous day, because as the days progressed from June 21st all the way until the autumnal equinox, then the sun will get lower in the sky as seen from the North Pole. So let me go ahead now and change this to roughly the autumnal equinox. I'm gonna change this to September 22nd like so, and then on that day you can see that the sun is on the horizon. It would basically set on that day. Okay, let me go ahead and change some of the other parameters here. Let me go ahead and move this back to June 21st, like so, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the latitude here to zero degrees. That will be the equator, like so. Okay, so if you stand here at the equator, you have north, south, east, and west marked out. Right over here on the northern horizon is the north celestial pole, here on the southern horizon is the south celestial pole. And then right here in blue is the celestial equator. Notice that the celestial equator passes through the zenith when you are standing here at the equator. And then on June 21st at noon, the sun is right here on the meridian. It is a little bit to the north when you're standing here at the equator. Notice that on that day, the sun will rise straight up here in the northeast, hit the meridian at noon, and then set like so straight down here in the northwest on that day. Okay, let me go ahead and change the day here into the autumnal equinox, and then you're gonna see the sun at noon eventually move to the zenith when I do. So I'm adjusting the day by moving this bar. Okay, so roughly about right there, more or less, pretty close. And then you can see that the sun is at the zenith at noon when you stand at the equator, 
on the day of the autumnal equinox. Okay, let me go ahead and change to a couple of other lines of latitude. Let's go ahead and change this to Los Angeles, which is roughly 33 degrees north, like so. And then on, June, on September 21st, that is, at noon, for example, you will see right here the sun on the meridian on that day. And then from here in Los Angeles, we would look off to the northern direction like so to see the direction of the north celestial pole. The north celestial pole forms an angle above the horizon. The angle that the north celestial pole is above the horizon is actually equal to the latitude, in this case, 33 degrees north latitude. Then watch what happens on this day, for example. Once again, this is roughly the autumnal equinox. If I then set it into motion, sun sets due west on that day, and then it will rise due east on that day like so. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this like that, and let's move it back to noon. There we go, like so. Okay, let me go ahead and show you a couple of other lines of latitude that are important. Let me go ahead and move into the Southern Hemisphere. And for the Southern Hemisphere, I'm gonna illustrate here the Tropic of Capricorn. So the important day for the Tropic of Capricorn is December 21st. So let me go ahead and change the day appropriately, like so. And then the Tropic of Capricorn is uh, 23 and a half degrees south latitude. So let me go ahead and move down to the Southern Hemisphere. Like so, let me change this to 23 and a half. Oh, come on. There we go, like so. And then on December 21st at noon, if you were standing here at the Tropic of Capricorn, you would look straight up and you would see the sun at the zenith. Over here to the right-hand side of the diagram is the south celestial pole in the sky. Right here to the left, looking towards the north, is the celestial equator. So notice that basically this diagram here for the southern hemisphere is essentially backwards of what you would see for the northern hemisphere. And then let me also choose one last line of latitude here that's important, that is the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. Let me go ahead and illustrate the Arctic Circle. So to do so, I'm going to move the latitude bar here like so to about 66 and a half degrees north. And let me go, down, go ahead and do this. Okay, there we go, 66 and a half degrees north. And then the important day for the Arctic Circle, for example, would be the summer solstice. So let's go ahead and change this to June 21st, like so. Okay, so if you stand at the Arctic Circle, notice that basically this is the furthest south of the North Pole that you can be on this day, June 21st, and still see the sun for 24 hours. So it's positioned right over here on the meridian at noon. But then watch what happens to the position of the sun when we go to midnight, which is down here on the lower left-hand side of the diagram. Let me move this into motion like so. And then pause it about right there. Basically, the sun is more or less right on the horizon here. Let me move it a little bit further to the north. There we go. Like so. The sun is basically right on the northern horizon here at midnight when you stand at the Arctic Circle on that day, June 21st. So by playing around with the parameters here on the upper right-hand side of the simulator, you can then simulate all the dome diagrams associated for any point on the surface of the Earth at any time of the year and at any time of the year.